measuring the speed of sound with toilet rolls. For this challenge, you will need these items. Three toilet rolls, something to write your results down with, blue tack, in-ear headphones, a smartphone or tablet, a ruler or tape measure. We're going to use this equipment to measure the speed of sound. Did you know sound has a speed? It's a wave, and its speed is about a millionth of the speed of light. That's why, if someone a few hundred metres away kicks a ball, you see it before you hear it. And similarly, lightning. In this measurement challenge, we shall use sound waves of known frequency or pitch to find the wave length, and then use the simple wave equation to calculate the wave speed. We'll use the physical phenomenon interference. I'll explain. Identical sound waves come from the two earphones. Sound waves are different to how they're shown here, but the effect is exactly like this. The wave at the top here is the sum of the two waves at the bottom. As we change the distance between the earphones, the two waves can add. We call this constructive interference, or cancel each other out. We call this destructive interference. Each time we move the earpiece by one wave length, we move on one interference cycle. So let's do the experiment. Place one roll on a flat surface with one headphone at the bottom of the tube. Stack two more rolls on top to make a tunnel for the sound and to help isolate experimental sound from others. Find the right sound. We searched YouTube for a 3 kHz test tone that will create a wave that has 3,000 vibrations every second. While playing the sound, carefully lower the second headphone into the tube as far as it will go, then slowly raise the headphone and listen very carefully. At one point, the sound should almost disappear. Make tiny adjustments to find the quietest point. Mark the cable at the top of the tube with the pen or a piece of blue tack. Move the cable up higher to find the next quietest point and mark that too. Remove the headphone and measure the distance between the two marks in millimetres. So let's write down our results. Here's the frequency in hertz from YouTube. The wavelength we measured in millimetres, but we're going to write that now in metres. And multiply these two together to get our speed in metres per second. We got two sets of results here because we had three points. Again, multiply together to get a speed of sound value. Because it's always best measurement practice to do more than one test. This challenge was set by Robin and Laura, who use this method at NPL to measure temperature really accurately. Temperature? I thought this was all about sound waves and length. Ah, the speed of sound changes with temperature. That's why flutes go out of tune as they warm up. These pictures are of the amazing machine they use. This method is used to measure temperature inside nuclear reactors as the intense radiation would affect other types of thermometer.